right, welcome everyone. Let's get started right on time so we can have lots of good time for discussion. Uh, this slide is a, a recap of what you've seen elsewhere. Um, the session is recorded um, and let's just get right into it. Uh, so hopefully you're here to hear about Fugu's uh, multi-screen window placement effort. Um, I'm Mike Wasserman. I work on uh, Chrome's web platform team. And uh, I'm going to give you a quick lightning overview and update here. Um, I'll try and beat the three minutes of my lightning talk, uh, but kind of cover the same things. Um, basically, the web was built around single screen devices. And nowadays, lots of people have multiple monitors connected to their desktops or laptops. Um, and in some scenarios, this is actually really critical for different business applications and uh, otherwise just really useful for folks. Um, and we want the web to be able to take advantage of the same capabilities that um, desktop applications have uh, in these hardware scenarios. Um, I'm gonna skip over the video here, sorry about that. Hello, I'm Mike Wasserman. I'm a member of Chrome's web platform. Sorry. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll skip through some of these slides. I cover all this material in the lightning talk, and um, I suspect that lots of people are kind of familiar with the basics here. Um, the revised API shape um, exposes a Boolean as to whether or not the device has multiple screens. Um, it, we add a, an event on the screen object itself to uh, notify um, listeners of changes. And there are methods to request uh, a new screens interface that exposes multiple screen objects um, that kind of parallels the existing paradigm for window.screen to access the singular screen hosting your window. Um, here's a, a quick look at the anatomy of what's standardized in, on the little green laptop itself. Um, you can get some basic information about each screen connected, like the width and height. Um, and uh, commonly available are uh, left and top or available left and available top coordinates for the screen in a multi-screen space. Um, and we propose uh, both standardizing those properties and adding some new information about each screen connected so that applications can make use of this information to target the most appropriate screen for different circumstances, whether it be uh, showing a presentation on an externally connected display like a projector or um, showing uh, medical images on a high resolution device or something like that. Um, and this uh, is useful for window placement, um, which is the placement of non full screen windows, um, pop-ups or web application windows uh, using existing APIs uh, with move to or move by, um, you're simply passing X and Y coordinates. Um, and in general, um, these do tend to, uh, current implementations tend to accept cross-screen uh, coordinate system values here. Um, and we want to standardize that so that um, this really is well supported. Um, for the full screen API, we're adding a dictionary parameter to the full screen options dictionary uh, that allows you to choose the target screen um, from the information that was requested. Um, and so, uh, there are some demos available. Um, it's in origin trial right now. Uh, sorry, I'm just blowing past some of the slides here. Um, trying to get to the, the good stuff, discussion. Um, so um, I think, uh, why don't we try and get into that discussion? I'm happy to go back to some of the earlier slides to discuss some of the more, uh, some of the API and um, kind of the details of this space in more detail. Um, but I have some ideas for uh, discussion prompts here. Um, we can talk about um, changes from the first origin trial, the updated API shape that we're targeting, um, which is reflected in our explainer, but not quite yet in our draft spec um, or implementation. Um, we can talk about related uh, proposals around foldable form factors. Um, different screen coordinate issues, implementation quirks, and platform gaps. These are all kind of topics ripe for discussion. And I have slides um, discussing each of them in a bit more detail. Um, so uh, if anyone has a question, please pipe up at any time. Otherwise, I'm going to kind of keep 
discussing some of the, the details that might uh, prompt some questions and discussion. And I'll try and keep a, an eye out for the uh, hands up or, or chats here. Um, and yeah, I also have the Blink on Breakout Room 1 chat open. Um, so uh, here's kind of an overview of the API shape changes that we're pursuing after our first origin trial based on feedback. Um, some of the uh, salient uh, feedback that we got is around just usability in terms of the API. Um, folks expect to have um, updated screen information available on screen change events. Um, and uh, we're also making the change event information a little more ergonomic by having um, uh, the screen's interface. Let's see, I think the next slide actually shows an overview of all of the, uh, uh, the updated API shape. So um, the screen's interface itself um, has um, a frozen array of screens that are live objects. And these are updated as soon as um, you uh, connect or disconnect a screen or some of the properties change if you change the resolution through the operating system. Um, and this on change handler fires um, when that frozen array changes. Um, but if any of the attributes of a particular screen change, um, the new on change event on screen objects will change or will fire, sorry. Um, and uh, that frozen array is comprised of screen advanced objects, um, which uh, extend, uh, they inherit the screen interface and offer some extended attributes. Um, and yeah, uh, this is the uh, kind of a snapshot of the API shape. Um, I can give a quick overview about related proposals. Actually, just today, um, Ansi, uh, who is the chair of the second screen CG and uh, working group um, for the W3C, published a uh, form factors explainer that uh, myself and some other folks working on foldables proposals have put together that kind of gives an overview of the different uh, use cases for APIs uh, targeting each of these uh, new form factors. Um, and a bit of an explanation as to um, what, what differences there are between desktop environments with multi-display connected or foldable environments where there's either a single screen that can fold or multiple screens um, that are used to create a single virtual screen in the operating system. Um, this also has some questions that are kind of unanswered at the moment about the different APIs. Um, if, uh, um, so one, one main aspect that people are looking to solve with foldable proposals is to um, divide the content when a window spans both sides of a foldable display um, so that you say the left side shows a list of emails and the right side shows the preview um, or you know UI controls are not shown in the middle of the screen um, where there might be a hinge and no actual visible surface um, but if uh, uh, one open question is if this um, if there's a single screen, say window.screen contains multiple segments, like it's split across a dual screen display device. Um, is there some other way to determine that attribute before a window is placed there? So if you are able to imperatively say, place my window on this screen, um, it would be useful to know, is that screen comprised of multiple segments, multiple uh, physical display units that are combined to be a single display? Um, and uh, yeah, there are some open questions around the screen fold API uh, proposed by a collaboration between Samsung and Intel um, around uh, the different types of folds that they'll support. Um, moving on, <laughs> um, there are some different 
coordinate system trade-offs between adopting the uh, cross-screen coordinate system that most implementations currently use, um, basically implementations between uh, privacy and uh, generalized window placement capabilities. Um, in some kind of limited scenarios, uh, uh, web applications may be able to infer the presence of multiple screens if, say, their screen left coordinate is a greater value than the width of the current screen, um, different things like that. Um, so we have a, a question on the, the breakout room chat. Uh, does the Windows placement API allow a page to open a full screen window with no Chrome? And currently, it does not. Um, currently, uh, you would need to open the window and then request full screen. Um, and uh, this is actually a capability that we're interested in. Um, some partners have expressed interest in the ability to open a full screen window. Um, if we actually take a look ahead at another slide, um, one of the quirks of uh, full screen uh, as it's currently implemented is that it uses the underlying browser window to enter a full screen state and show the uh, document's content, the spe specified element uh, in a full screen window. Um, and doing so kind of uh, yields this interesting behavior where if you request full screen on another display, the window needs to move to that display and then show full screen, where you might expect the ability to uh, pop a, an element out of its current frame and just show that element on the opposite screen in a full screen window. Um, and you know that, that's something that uh, we would consider useful um, in certain scenarios. And uh, it's kind of related, but um, one alternate solution to this might be allowing sites to open separate windows full screen um, right off the bat. Uh, there, there is... Um, a deprecated window feature in the window.open method, uh, full screen equals true or one. Um, and this was uh, deprecated because of generally abuse. Um, but um, it might be reasonable to uh, revive this capability if it's um, gated by a permission where the user has already elected to allow the site to place windows across their screens and see screen information. Um, so that's that's definitely something that I would consider, and there's there's an open issue for it on the GitHub. Um, so looking at some of the other fun quirks here, um, <laughs> window.open currently takes a screen left, screen top, but then an inner width and inner height, um, which is not terribly ergonomic if you're trying to build a dashboard. Um, this is because you don't know the outer width and outer height of the window when you're making the window.open call. You'll actually have to wait for the browser to resolve the frame dimensions and create the window and for it to be placed. Um, and then when you get um, certain events, you'll be able to uh, check the outer width and outer height of the window and then continue building your um, dashboard, or you would need to make assumptions about the created uh, Windows frame dimensions. Um, similarly, sites can't actually calculate the window segments um, that I alluded to with regard to foldable APIs. They can't see which portions of the window um, are on particular displays through this API right now um, because we don't actually expose a window dot inner left or inner top giving the frame dimensions themselves um, so if you know the window is bordered by a small frame on the left you don't know exactly how many pixels the content uh, is spread across on the current dis on on one half of this split display um, uh, taking a quick look at issue number three here. Um, uh, there's um, basically, we'll, we'll need to uh, implement some renderer side validation of multi-screen permissions and bounds uh, restrictions. Um, if we want to be able to offer better 
um, tentative values that are synchronously accessible when sites call window.open or window.move to. Um, and uh, that's, you know, it's fairly straightforward, but it's uh, something that's on our radar to tackle that hasn't been quite addressed yet. Um, and uh, another similar uh, implementation detail is um, plumbing uh, what values are unspecified in certain calls. Um, Blink itself tends to wrap up, uh, open, and move to uh, calls to this set bounds function um, passed to the browser um, with a rect, and unspecified values are passed as zeros. Um, but values may be specified as zeros. Um, and this just kind of leads to some uh, unfortunate um, uh, inference and that, that could be solved by more appropriately passing whether values were specified or not. Um, there's quite a bit of catch up that we have to do with web platform tests in this space, um, largely because uh, while we can mock out the presence of multiple displays, um, the browser itself won't adhere to being able to place windows on those other displays. Um, and uh, in some cases, this is going to run up against platform limitations. Um, and yeah, uh, going back to uh, the renderer's role here, um, because we use Content Shell currently for web platform tests, we would want the renderer itself to perform a lot of validation and permission checking. Um, and this slide might spark some interest, discussion, questions, um, potential future proposals, things that folks have um, brought up in the past. Um, there are open issues on each of these. And um, yeah, it's worth uh, discussing some uh, useful changes, uh, such as exposing window move events uh, in. Uh, to correspond with window resize events so that you can know when a window is repositioned. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, rather than listening to me drone on about this, uh, I'm going to uh, start picking on you. <laughs> uh, or uh, I, I encourage anyone to, to raise any questions that they have. Is there a way to specify CSS on a particular screen via media queries? Um, so my knowledge here is a bit limited, and uh, maybe I don't quite understand the question. Um, CSS media queries will give information about the current screen, um, about the window.screen object that's hosting the current um, window. Um, there's uh, currently no capacity to request like uh, an array, a frozen array of advanced screen objects through CSS. Um, perhaps the question is asking, can you can you set CSS values that are uh, automatically toggled based on the screen that you're on? Um, certainly, I think you can. Um, use the current screens um, width and height and uh, color gamut, things like that. Um, I don't know the particular details. The number of screens. Yeah. Um, we haven't explored that as a CSS media query um, just because of the uh, inability to express more um, uh, more uh, detailed information beyond that. So once you have a number of screens, you, there wouldn't really be a way to say, "Get me the resolution of screen two or you know the you know a uh, certain screen. Um, so that that's kind of why we've chosen to express this through JavaScript. Um, I'll go back to the update API shape, and it looks like we have a couple raised hands. I hope that that answered your question. Uh, go ahead, Victor. 
Uh, yes. <coughs> so also for the previous question, I think uh, the topic of CSS and how we're going to adapt CSS to this came uh, up during TPAC as well. Aside from the problems of how do we evolve CSS syntax to make something like this work, there's the problem of uh, if we want if we want an API where uh, there are it's possible for user agents to implement uh, permission prompts, then how this works out in CSS is an entirely different world that I don't think we've looked at yet. So if you want, for example, to ask for the number of screens, right now in JavaScript, in order to ask for the number of screens in Chrome, you will have to get a permission. So I guess in CSS, the layout engine would lie to you so you don't get that information. And then when you get that permission, you get the re-layout or, yeah, it's, we don't have a good answer for that yet. It is a problem we still need to figure out. Yeah, thanks for bringing up that point. Uh, Jeremy, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm curious uh, about uh, how you handle um, uh, displays which have some sort of a carve out that's non-rendering, like a notch on some mobile devices or you know a circular cut out for a camera or something like that. Right. Um, I, I think that uh, our intent is to expose those in the same way that they're currently exposed, um, which is maybe a little limited. Um, I think at this point, the only way to detect that is by getting CSS values like safe insets. Um, perhaps there's other, there are other CSS values that uh, you can introspect um, when your window is placed on such a screen. OK, so you have to put the window on the screen first and then inspect what the safe instance are and maybe move the window around a little until you figure out like where on the screen it is. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily, well, um, so in, in practice, uh, notches are generally on mobile device screens. Um, and I think that perhaps the only case where this might actually come up is being able to use a mobile device screen or say like uh, an iPad as a sidecar as a secondary display for um, a device. Or if say a device, a mobile device had a secondary screen attached, being able to uh, get information about the uh, integrated display while your window is positioned on a secondary display, I think uh, it is yeah. that right. Is that yeah? I'm not. I'm not saying that. Like I'm. That I know that this is that I know this to be like common today. I'm just one of those things where once those started appearing, it was the thing that I was like, oh, I never thought of that. I wonder if in the future, you know, desktop displays will start having, you know, integrated webcams that are cut in the same way as on mobile devices or something like that. And would, is this you know general enough to handle that sort of innovation where it to happen in the future? I think um, the right way to actually address that would be by having um, either modified available, uh, available left, available width, and available height, available top uh, values in the screen itself, or by adding something that parallels the safe area insets on the screen interface itself, so that um, if you were if your window was positioned on one display and you wanted to get the safe area of another display, um, that would be exposed on the screen interface. And then one other the question. screen advanced interface, right? Well, while I have while I have the, the, the floor, I'm also curious. Um, a lot of desktop applications when they go full screen will change the screen resolution. Is that a thing that we think web apps should be able to do if they're going full screen on a display, or is that something that they should not be able to do? Right. Um, it's definitely been uh, requested. Um, and I, I don't think that we've determined the right route to, to take here. Um, perhaps some additional permission gated capabilities might allow changing screen configurations. Um, but as, as it stands, we're not, uh, we're not offering that through this API right now. Um, but it's definitely something that uh, needs further consideration. Uh, you know, I would I would like to see sites be able to adapt their content to the given resolution of the screen, um, but obviously there are use cases for changing the the resolution of the screen itself, or um, which might be seen similar to uh, like an orientation lock uh, on mobile devices. You're able to lock the device in in a certain orientation through the web, so it may be reasonable to expose similar capabilities for 
uh, screen resolution lock while they're full screen. I mean, like gaming is the one that comes to mind for me, right? Uh, where often games, you know, want to be able to render at a lower resolution than the the display would normally use. Yeah, yeah I th I think that that's uh, a really important use case. That and video conferencing um, are are pretty uh, aligned with that interest. Uh, I, yeah, Kurt asked about uh, useful to know if a screen is touch enabled. And yeah, the uh, pointer types shown here um, is meant to expose that information uh, so that you can know in advance which screens are uh, support touch input or pen input um, or neither. Um, so that you can say, uh, in a multi-window application, place your touch-enabled control surface on a touch display if you know that that's a common use case for your application. Cool. Uh, just a, a few minutes left here. Um, I've, I'm liking these questions so far. Bring more on. All right, yeah. Go ahead, Victor. Um, <clears throat> so you talked about implementation quirks. I'm wondering if you could elaborate a bit about uh, how this meshes in with uh, existing code in Chrome uh, to support displays and multi-screen and all this, and if there is any cleanup or any improvement that interested folks could help with in this area. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there are a number of open bugs um, around the UI display uh, code uh, directory and uh, component. Um, basically, we have a lot of per-platform code here. And being able to um, have a bit more consistency and you know, the way I'd like it is a bit more uh, consolidation of duplicated code. Um, around the screen base class, um, which um, interestingly, Chrome's code base describes a screen as the uh, composite space of multiple displays, um, where the web APIs describe a screen as a single display. Um, it would be nice to see screen base used uh, more typically so that we would have um, common methods to find the appropriate display uh, given a coordinate um, across platforms. Um, there's also a lot of little one-off places where uh, Windows-specific code might check the H monitor information through uh, Windows System 30, System 32 API calls, um, and uh, it would be more appropriate for this code to be using the UI display uh, base classes um, to to get uh, display information. Um, and yeah, there's uh, a lot of uh, changes that will actually need to support the updated API shape, providing uh, multi-screen information to the renderers as it becomes available, um, as opposed to on-demand. Um, and yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead, Jeremy. Uh, are remote presentation displays out of scope for the purposes of this API? Things like casting to, uh, you know, some sort of remote Chromecast or something like that, or is that, or into a presentation? Right. Yeah. Um, I generally do consider that out of scope. The presentation APIs and remote playback APIs um, are pretty well established in this space, um, and they offered a, a good amount of inspiration here. Um, uh, folks should know that those APIs do actually support local displays, um, but the ability to uh, place separate windows on those uh, other displays is is not possible with a presentation API. Um, you're kind of limited to having a single full screen window shown on uh, each display where you have a presentation active. Um, we see this as a bit more complementary to that proposal. Um, and this is more of an extension of what is your device's um, uh, overall visual workspace. 
as opposed to what are the uh, work visual workspaces available to any connected or you know remote device. Um, so when you have multiple displays connected on Windows or Mac or Linux, you can extend your desktop. Um, Chrome OS, ditto. Um, and so this is trying to uh, expose that overall visual workspace to the web in the same way that it would be available to um, a, a desktop application. All right, well, uh, I think that we are at time. Um, and I want to make sure that everyone is able to attend the, the wrap up final sessions. Um, so thanks so much for, for attending and uh, your questions and discussion here. Um, I look forward to chatting with any of you more uh, as, as any other uh, topics come up. Feel free to reach out to me or the team. Thanks.